Hello witches, diviners, and cosmic beings. I'm your host Laurel, and welcome to the Simply Witchery podcast, where we discuss witchery, ritual, the divine, and magic of all sorts. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about me, my practice, and where I want to take this podcast. Then we'll go to tarot time, where I'll answer a listener question and do a reading for the collective. Stay tuned! Hi everyone, my name is Laurel, and welcome to the Simply Witchery Podcast! I'm so excited to be starting this new part of my practice and my journey, and I'm excited to share it with you. So, first off, thank you for listening. I'm excited to grow and to follow this push that I've been given to get out of my comfort zone and to listen more and share more of myself with you. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know that my gods and guides have been pushing me to do this for a while. They let me start with a blog and then they were like, no, you really gotta, you gotta podcast. You just have to. And so here I am. So I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am an eclectic witch and pagan. I am a solitary practitioner. I, um, I have friends that are witchy and we are sort of a coven, but we don't practice together. We discuss our practices together, but we don't, we're not a traditional coven, um, if that makes sense. As far as my paganism goes, I worship the Greek pantheon, the Norse pantheon, and the Kemetic pantheon is sort of poking at me right now, so they'll be a part of my practice soon, I'm sure. My patron deities in the Greek pantheon are Ares and Hephaestus, and for the Norse pantheon, I um, mainly worship Tyr and Fenrir. I want to talk a little bit about my patrons for a second because I feel like it's important. I always feel the need to defend them, which is hilarious because here I am, a tiny little mortal who wants to defend gods of war. Um, Ares in particular, I feel I need to defend a lot. And, um, and part of that is because I'm much closer to Ares than I am to Tyr. Um, Tyr and I have a relatively distant relationship, whereas Ares and I are as close as I am to any deity. I think another part of that, though, is that Tyr has been allowed to be complex in the Norse neo-pagan movement, for the most part. There are, of course, the neo-Nazi exceptions, but um, the majority of good people who worship him believe him to be complex. Um, And with Ares, I find that there, one, aren't a lot of worshippers of Ares um, that I've been able to find, and two, people that are Hellenic polytheists, but don't worship Ares, have a lot of opinions about him. Um, and as you can tell, it frustrates me, um, because I know Ares to be incredibly complex. Yes, he's a war god. He's the god of war. He likes to fight, but the reasons behind why he fights are vastly more complex than people give him credit for. And that will be one of the things we talk about in the next episode, um, so stay tuned for that. Moving on, outside of being a pagan, which is a m- massive part of my practice at this point, I am also a great lover of rituals. I believe that every moment can be a magical ritual that has intent and purpose behind it. And so I'm excited to share the daily rituals that I do and the ways that I bring magic into every moment of my life. I also super love crystals. I'm not incredibly knowledgeable about them. I am not a crystal witch. I just love rocks. I think rocks are super pretty and super cool. And so I'm excited to learn more about them with you. I also use a lot of sigils in my practice. Um, Symbols and symbolism is 
a growing part of my practice it is coming to me more and more as i expand and learn and grow as a witch um recently the kabbalah has come into my practice i'm learning about the sphera and the 22 paths of life and that has really informed a lot of the magic that i've done lately and it has also affected my rituals, um, just even my daily ones. And it's given me a lot of power and I'm excited to continue to learn about it and continue to share it with all of you. In general, the larger purpose of my practice is to answer the deeper questions about life, um, about the self and where we come from and why we're here. And I use and I use my study and my magic and my divining to help me answer those questions. And I really want to use this podcast to help you answer some of those questions for yourself. Um, that's kind of the point of all of this is to share what I've learned with others so that they can learn things for themselves. I also am a diviner and that's a separate thing for me. You can be a witch without being a diviner, and you can be a diviner without being a witch or a pagan, or whatever other label you want to put on there. Divining is a separate practice from magic for me. It's just peeling back the layers of yourself and allowing the divine, the universe, the source to speak into you so that you can understand more about the world around you, about yourself, about the situations you're in. So that's why it's not magical to me. It's just an opening of a door and letting something come through, which some people would call it magic. I don't. That's just the way I see things. And that's just a little overview of me and my practice and beliefs. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at simplywitchery at gmail.com. Next up is the Tarot Corner. Stay tuned. Welcome back, and welcome to the Tarot Corner, where I'll be doing two readings. The first one will be a reading for the collective, just a general reading, and then the second will be a listener question. Um, I want to start this Tarot Corner with a little disclaimer, since this is the first one. I read the cards just based off of their art first, and then I take into account any keywords or anything like that on the card. And so the meaning that I glean from the cards is different from um, the traditional meanings of them very often, and even between two readings that I do one after another, if I were to pull the same card, I would get a different meaning for each person. Um, And so if you notice any uh, quote-unquote discrepancies between the meanings of the cards, that's why it's intentional and it's just the way that I read. So let's get into it. We'll start with the collective reading. As you listen to this message that the cards have, take what resonates with you from this reading and just let go of what doesn't. All of this reading might resonate for you. None of it might resonate for you. It's a reading for the collective, so it's for all of us, but it's also possible that the cards just aren't meeting you today, and that's okay. Today, I pulled four cards, the Four of Swords, the Knight of Cups, the Page of Pentacles, and the Two of Swords. Each of these cards has an individual message, so we will just go through them. I'll describe the card, and then I will give its message. So we'll start with the Four of Swords. Um, In the foreground of the Four of Swords, there's a rabbit that's laying down. Um, It's apparently sleeping peacefully. 
Um, it doesn't seem to be wounded or anything. And there are three ornate swords laying above the rabbit and one below it. There are map markings in the background of this card that depicts a whole of a globe. This card counsels us to take mental rest and to pause. The consciousness of the collective is going a little haywire at the moment and in order to combat this feeling in the collective we need to pay particular attention to our own mental health so take the time that you need to rest and to recover and recuperate and don't apologize for it next the knight of cups depicts a sailor in a small wooden ship the sail above her head is full she looks ahead to the horizon and holds a harpoon that has a golden rope tied to it a constellation of a bear glows above her in the sky between the bottom boards of the ship a pair of fins is slipping out between the crack the message of this card is that as you fill your cup with rich and healing sustenance dig deep and recharge more than superficially there is action to take and deep work to be done but your cup has to be full in order for you to succeed you need more than just the drops that a little bit of self-care that will allow you to just get by will provide for you next in the page of pentacles a woman stands among a large skulk of foxes skull is just the name for a group of foxes um <laughs> clouds are clearing out of the sky above her and a bright shining pentacle is behind her head she reminds us that though we are surrounded by those that would take advantage of us we can navigate through their manipulation and lies to gain wisdom from the interactions that we have with them the key is to observe them and their actions without being affected by them so keep your eyes fixed on the truth you know inside what your truth is and no one can do or say anything to change that unless you give them permission to don't give any permission you are who you are and it's wonderful and glorious and so keep a hold of that truth but learn things from the people who are trying to manipulate you and finally the two of swords is an image of a blindfolded bluebird that sits in a nest balanced on the meeting of two crossed swords in the background a path can be seen cutting through the tall grass and leading to a forest backed by misty mountains the bluebird tells us that ego has given us an illusion of choice our path is clear and to reach our highest good we must follow that path so listen to your intuition and your gut feelings they will take you where you need to go and that is the collective reading for this episode i hope that these words guide you to your highest good where peace and blessings will flow to you and now we'll move on to the listener question i'm going to keep these questions anonymous um just in case some of them get deep and so that we can um we can answer some really deep questions without um making anyone feel uncomfortable so this week's question comes from two listeners um and they ask My fiancé and I get pretty stressed out about money. We like to acquire things and we're not good at saving. We both shop online when we're bored or depressed. But then afterwards, we feel really bad about having blown our money. We keep wishing we just made more money, even though that's not really the problem. So we keep beating ourselves up about the whole thing. What can we do to manage this better? So I pulled four cards for the two of you from the Cosmos Tarot. I pulled the Five of Air, Death, Knight of Earth, and Page of Fire. So these cards are coming to you in pairs with Death accompanying the Five of Air and the Knight of Earth with the Page of Fire. Because these cards are in pairs, I'll describe them all to you first and then I'll read them to you. Death is a vision of a statue garden. A bust of a woman sits on a pedestal in the foreground. 
her hair is gathered in two buns shaped to look like roses on the top of her head a masquerade mask in the shape of a butterfly covers her eyes a sculptor's rasp is buried in her shoulder and vein-like cracks in the stone travel up her neck and over her chin ending at her cheek behind her is the statue of a raven with golden cracks on its chest flowers surround the two statues and a spider flies from its web above them not standing on its web but connected to it the five of air depicts a fishing ship in arctic waters two icebergs flank the ship in the background and another floats just below the water nearly touching the rudder of the ship the night of earth depicts apollo and poseidon emerging from opposite ends of the surface of the water that sits in the center of the card a dolphin jumps from the water before each god behind apollo's head glows a vision of the sun behind poseidon is his trident the page of fire shows a compass with an open eye at its center in the sky above a cyclops mermaid as wind whips around her and stars shine above her she sits with her eye closed holding a small golden box open in front of her chest now on to the reading the five of air and death tells me that there is a deep root to this problem that needs to be examined take a look at why the two of you turn to spending and possessions for comfort the problem will be solved by the two of you unwinding that paradigm both for yourselves and as a couple so pull up the root of the problem where it lies take a look at how money was handled in your childhood what was your parents relationship with money what were their attitudes toward money and what did they teach you about money and how to handle it the knight of earth and the page of fire offer a more immediate solution than the other pair they ask you to refocus where your money goes support good causes with your money instead of buying things for yourself support small businesses and businesses that support a cause that you can get behind use your money to do things that you can be proud of this will help shift your relationship with money as you do the deep work of the other pair. And that's our listener reading for the week. Thank you so much for sending in your question. It was my pleasure to read for you. If you'd like to receive a reading on a future episode, email your question to simplywitchery at gmail.com. And that's the end of this week's show. Thank you all so much for listening to this inaugural episode of the Simply Witchery podcast. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and ratings and reviews would be greatly appreciated. Follow Simply Witchery on Instagram and Twitter for daily divination, magical tips, and spiritual musings. The music in this episode is Thingamajig by Audionautics. You can find the complete track and other amazing music at audionautics.com. Love and light to each and every one of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!